This is the latest subwoofer unit by Sonos and it is called the Sub Mini. As the name suggests, it is the smaller brother of the flagship Sonos Sub. And since it comes in a smaller size, it is also at a much more affordable price compared to the larger Sub. Well, I wouldn't call 699 US dollars or 2999 ringgit Malaysia to be affordable, but the fact remains that it is still cheaper than the Sonos Sub in comparison. So let's find out if it is actually worth the price. I have to clarify that this script was originally written by Mr. John but he's not there now because he had to go home since he had COVID. So I'm taking over his spot and also the script. Do remember that it is originally written by him so I'm just gonna read what he wrote for me to read it out for you technically. So I've been using the Sonos Beam Gen 2 at home for a few months now and it has been an excellent soundbar. It's not like the soundbar itself is lacking in bass but nothing can really replace the cinematic bass rumble coming from a dedicated subwoofer. Since the Sub Mini is priced exactly the same as the Sonos Beam Gen 2, I assume Sonos is trying to pair this sub with the Beam Gen 2 while leaving the higher end sub for the Arc soundbar for example. Of course, you can also pair this sub mini with other Sonos speakers as well, except for the portable speakers like the Sonos Roam and Sonos Move. The cylindrical subwoofer measures at 23cm in diameter and 30.5cm tall. It can be placed anywhere in the room without standing out too much. The plug socket and RJ45 connectors are located underneath the subwoofer and we are just gonna plug in the power socket since the connection and pairing is done through Wi-Fi. The setup process is done through the Sonos mobile app so it's pretty straightforward overall. Just follow the setup instructions and add this Sonos Sub Mini into your existing room group and then the app will automatically pair your current Sonos speakers to make sure that they work flawlessly with the new Sub Mini. And then we can immediately tell the difference once we enable the Sub Mini. The bass is now punchier than ever and it can be felt even though you are not near the system. The thing is, unlike any other subwoofer that becomes boomy once you turn up the bass level or volume, the Sub Mini keeps the lows under control and it doesn't overpower the entire soundtrack. Obviously, bass hits might not like this kind of control but this is how sound is supposed to be by having a balanced dynamic among low, mids and highs. The dual 6-inch woofer drivers are designed to face inwards to create force cancelling effects that generates deep lows and at the same time, neutralizes rattle, distortion, and unwanted vibrations. That explains why we hardly felt any aggressive thumping bass when we tune up its volume. And for those who are looking for a customizable sound profile, the Sub Mini also supports the Sonos True Play tuning. Unfortunately, this feature is only available on iPhones and iPads, actually some iPads for that matter. Otherwise, the conventional bass adjustments are still available for us all to adjust. We recorded a few samples on the differences of having the subwoofer enabled or disabled and at different bass levels. I hope these samples can help you to get an idea of how the Sub Mini enhances the overall listening experience. In short, the Sonos Sub Mini is an excellent addition to the Sonos speaker family. The hassle-free wireless connectivity and refined bass presence at home brings an entirely new listening perspective. Even if I have been using the Sonos Beam Gen 2 for months, this combination continues to bring new surprises over each soundtrack that I've been listening for months. And if you already own a Sonos sound system, then I highly recommend you to get this Sonos Sub Mini to go along with it because it will just enhance your 
listening experience tenfold when it comes to the bass because there are two types of bass actually. This is what I have added on top of Mr. John's original script. So there are two types of bass in my mind. The first bass is the ones that you can hear. So I think that many bigger speakers are able to produce this pretty well, like the Sonos Beam Gen 2 standalone. You can actually hear the bass and it's pretty good. But the other type of bass are the bass that you can feel and this is what the Sonos Sub Mini can provide. It literally is able to make the entire floor of our studio vibrate to the point where, yeah, it just offers a much more different experience overall. I mean, hearing is not the same as literally feeling it in your bones and Sub Mini literally just rattled my bones. So yeah, that's it. That's our review of the Sonos Sub Mini. This is a real short video and we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.